I am so happy to invite you and welcome you to another episode of Ask Me Anything. Uh, this is a new online forum uh, product that we're releasing with Connected Women of Influence. And we've got several different formats. This particular format is our Ask Me Anything, where we find one of our fabulous subject matter experts and we put them on the hot seat. And here they are to share their experience and their expertise with us. And we can grill them, ask them questions, share our experience, um, any, anything that comes to mind, you know, with, within reason. We should just say within reason. <laughs> yes. but, uh, but let me introduce to you, first of all, um, my lovely guest here. So Eva Venari is the founder of the Elevate Institute, and she is on a mission to dismantle the status quo of the sickness industry. Having spent most of her adult life suffering from all kinds of conditions and fighting for her sanity, <laughs> hello, she decided <laughs> to take matters into her own hands, and that's when everything shifted and her body went from being the enemy to being her best and most devoted ally and partner. Eva now teaches worldwide how sensitive people can take charge of their well-being and thrive in their lives. So welcome, Eva. So happy to have you here. Thank you. It's exciting to be here and getting the opportunity to share. And I, I should tell all of you that um, this is conversational. If you have a question that you'd like to ask, uh, you don't have to wait to the end or you can wait to the end, whatever you know you choose to do. But we want this to be a little bit more back and forth, a little bit more uh, conversational. And if there's something you want to ask that you don't necessarily want to just say out loud, just put it in the chat box to me alone. And then I'll share your question with the rest of the group and with, with Eva. So um, having said all that, I'm turning this microphone over to you, dear, and and you're on. On, I'm on it. You're excellent. On. Well, you heard kind of my my story. I was wanting to get out uh, and share that that I had found a way to overcome all these things, and I felt a little bit like a mushroom, you know, in the dark, <laughs> and unheard. And I thought, well, okay, what are the ways? that I can share the message. And the first one that everybody was like, oh, get on stage, you know, network and go and talk to people who are, maybe you have 10 people in the audience or 30 people in the audience and uh, you know, you're, you're spending your gas and your time and you're going to that networking meeting and you're talking to a few people and you're connecting with those few. But I thought there's gotta be a better way. How can I address thousands and even millions at a time? And how can I address those people when I'm maybe traveling or you know on a vacation or my, I do mix my vacation with my work but anyways <laughs> how can I address my message and market myself without paying for advertising without having to get in my car and possibly even get out of my bed and change clothes I mean I did change today for you you're over here but <laughs> if you wanted to do your marketing message from you know your your home um, from a place where you just you don't want to have to worry about your hair that day or your makeup that day podcasting is the answer because it's free it can be done from anywhere and it's it doesn't require a whole lot of resources just you so we're going to talk about those things like what what is it that you need to get started so um a conversation just to get it going how many of you have uh first of all how many of you listen to podcasts with a, a nod or a, something in the in the chat and we got patty i know does deborah does so, yeah if you listen to podcasts if this is an interesting thing i was in a um an audience of, of ten thousand seats that's, that's a lot of seats by the way it's a big room and it was a, a marketing uh program a four-day four-day weekend and the person in front of the stage she's at the stage she says so how many of you listen to a podcast right now and 99% of the room hands went up I'm a reader so I I wasn't listening to podcasts everybody else so <clears throat> um, then she says how many of you listen to five or more 95% of them stayed hands up it's a lot okay how many of you listen to 10 or more 50% of them went down they're still listening that's a lot of people listening to a lot of podcasts so this is an un, really an untapped market for those who have a message that needs to be heard, that can be heard by literally anyone on the planet. My business went from local and just really the United States to being worldwide overnight. And I attribute it to using 
this this forum, this whole new media. It's podcasting. So what is podcasting? Podcasting, um, not to kind of glaze over what the obvious, uh, podcasting is a like a TV show or radio show in, in a nutshell that is privately produced um, and then held on a server somewhere to, to be propagated to the podcasting website, such as iTunes, um, iPlay, Stitcher. You know, there's a bunch of those different places where you can find these podcasts. And the podcast can be played at will. So at any time, you're not tied into the morning news or, you know, the, based on some sort of schedule. And it's great because now you have an opportunity to take advantage of when people can listen to you, which is the on demand. And I got to say, that is the message moving forward with all media. People want their stuff now, <laughs> not later. They want it now. And so we're getting a chance to take advantage of that. So how do we do that? And the biggest myth is um, people say, I don't know anything about podcasting. I didn't either. I didn't either. I just knew that I didn't want to travel a lot in order to get my message out. And I didn't want to spend a lot of money and I didn't know what I needed to say, but I was going to figure it out. And so this, this was how, this is how I kind of framed things. Um, you do not need to know everything about podcasting in order to be an ideal guest. How to be an ideal guest is what we're going to talk about today. It's really not that big a deal. It's a little bit of things to prepare. A lot of it, you know, the answers to, and a lot of it, they're going to, as a podcast host, they're going to walk you through the process. It's, it's an, it's kind of a, a no brainer really. Um, but the hard part is who do you approach? How do you approach them? What's going to get you that? Yes. And then how to schedule it. And, and then, and then the, the, the little bits and pieces, like what equipment do I need? How much is this going to cost me? Is it going to cost me a lot of money? No, it's not. It's not going to cost a lot of money. So we're going to go through a few simple guidelines to get you going, um, where to find those things that you can utilize for your pod, you know, as a, as a guest that you can take with you. I call my stuff, my collection. I've got my microphone, my selfie light, my big light that I take with me and I, you can't really see it right now, but there's things that, that go with me. It's my command center. Uh, Deborah's seen it. We went up to the city club one day and I says, while we're here, I says, I have a podcast I'm scheduled to be on and I pull out my stuff and I've got my computer and next thing you know, I'm live on a podcast. So <laughs> you can do this from anywhere. And, and that's, that really is, that's my life I live. So um, anyways, that's, that's kind of where it comes from. So a lot of people think it costs money to be on a podcast. It doesn't, it's free. So to get your message out there, to get your brand out there, to get who you are and what you're all about out there, it's free. It's free, it's free, it's free. And if it costs, if somebody's saying to you, hey, to be on my podcast, it costs money. Um, I've done that. I've been on radio shows, which is live radio as opposed to a podcast. And I got to say, it didn't really give me a return for my money. Just go for the free ones. You want to look for ones that... Um, have a certain value to your ideal guest or your ideal client rather. And um, that's kind of something that we can talk about too. But so I'm going to talk about the equipment for a second. It does not take a lot. And there's a few technical things to know. I come from an IT background. So for me, this is easy stuff, but um, easy meaning that I'm used to it. I've been around it a long time, but I tend to, when I know something glaze over and go too quickly. So stop me. If something is like, Eva, wait a minute, that's, I, I don't understand what that means. Just stop me and ask me because I, I'm a little bit, <laughs> take it for granted. Um, the first thing you need when you want a podcast is a good mic. And I've had some people show up to even, as I host a, a Connected Women of Influence um, session, it's the Owning Your Health podcast. And I had a, a guest call me up 10 minutes before the show and she had me on speakerphone. I said, hey, you sound kind of kind of far away. And I know she'd been on podcasts before and I thought, okay, this is kind of strange. Why doesn't she have a, a microphone or at least earbuds? Okay, earbuds everybody has and it comes with a little microphone right here for you. Use it, right? So you see mine, mine are up here. I'm not using this microphone though. I'm using this one and I'll explain that in a minute. Yeah, Deborah's got hers on. We got a microphone. <laughs> so this is easy. It, it plugs into, now, two things. You sometimes will need a visual, right? So you can either use your front-facing camera or your phone. Have a way to hold the phone and front-facing camera. And then you just plug this guy into your auxiliary of either your computer or your phone. And then whoop, these go in, and now your microphone. But be careful. Ladies, we wear earrings, and every time we talk, we move, or our hair shuffles, or this or that, the other. 
your microphone is going to pick up all that movement and it's going to sound funny. The other thing to know about using these in a podcast is you sound like you're in a separate room from your interviewer. Really, you want to sound like you're in the same room. And the key to that is to get a separate mic. <laughs> so <laughs> These are cheap. I, I kid you not. I'm going to tell you where I get this stuff. I got my selfie light. Have you all seen these before? These are awesome. I have one. Right? It turns on. Like Kim Kardashian made them really popular. You just kind of hook it up to the top of your phone and you're instant. Instantly in your own little, you know, video space. So it's, it's easy to use. This was free. Um, this was $12 on wish.com, W-I-S-H.com. And um, sometimes you pay a little bit for shipping. Like this was $3 for shipping. Um, so it, it's cheap. You can pay more if you want to use Amazon or you want to go to a store feel free. But uh, for your resources, the stuff that you need to sound good, start off with just start off with these. Start off with your, your, your microphones that are here. The other thing you can use, um, although it doesn't have a way to listen to your host, so it's not going to work if you're doing um, anything else other than like a podcast, uh, not, I'm sorry, a live, uh, but you can use a lavalier and that connects here in case you want to use it have something close to you and again this is something you can get on wish.com it just has the microphone so it's great to make you clear and and close and if you're italian like me and you move around a lot when you talk it's great to have <laughs> something <laughs> that moves with you and one thing to be aware of when you're using a microphone such as this one um you sound different if you're really close to it as opposed to when it's sitting back far away and you can choose where you want to put it but test it <clears throat> so the easy thing to do when you get your equipment Unbox it, put it into your computer, you know, connect it, and then um, test it. So record and put it close to you. And here's the tip. This is one inch away directly in front of me. This is one inch away to the right of the microphone. This is one inch away to the left. See which one sounds the best and use it and then stay there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> because you want the good quality sound. There's nothing worse I mean, have you ever been turned on a TV show? Remember when you had to move the rabbit ears on the, on the TV show and you're like, I can't get the good picture to come in. I'm changing channel. You don't want people to turn off of your message and not hear you because of poor sound quality. So get something that you sound good with. Doesn't have to be expensive, even if it's just, just this. As you decide that you like the messaging, that you start getting a good return on your time and your investment, um, you know, that using podcasting, go ahead and get yourself an, a nice little microphone. It doesn't have to be crazy. And then um, I'm going to show you my light. So I got this on wish.com also, but you see it's a ring light and it collapses and it goes with me wherever and it has um, three different options to it. So on colors, you can, there's all kinds of different ways to do it, but you can choose uh, different color changes, find the one that works best for you and then stick with it. I like that one. So this is awesome. So uh, is there a is there a Kim Kardashian clip on your phone <laughs> light? And and that one's not free. It costs forty nine ninety five. <laughs> right? Yeah. Why would we want to pay more for it? I don't understand. I Seriously. Yeah. 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 No. It, it. It. I think that having having the right lighting. I can't tell you the number of times I've been on a podcast. My when I first started out, I didn't have the the right connection for the light and I didn't have it with me and so I was a little bit in the dark let me show you the difference when you've got a video going this is what it looked like no bueno <laughs> you want light <laughs> let there be <laughs> so <laughs> and make sure your background is something that you're okay with um you know you, you don't want to be on camera remember when you're doing a, a video podcast and some of them are video some of them are audio some of them do both they only you know depending on the format where it's shared you know, people will watch them either on Facebook or on YouTube or on LinkedIn and you'll know, share the video. But a lot of times if they're just listening to iTunes, it doesn't make a big impact as to what's behind you. But if they watch the video, they're going to want to see something behind you that's not, you know, other, it, it should be simple. It shouldn't be, be pulling away and deterring from you. Um, get rid of any clutter, get rid of any, uh, if you want to put messaging or have a banner behind you, a lot of people do that. It's a great idea. Um, so those are things to be thinking about. But it, it, this is my dining room table. It's also where I work. So <laughs> I use this, <laughs> it's easy. Um, yeah, yeah, there's no need that people think that they have to, you know, get studio space. No, no, you don't. 
you, you already pay for your house. Just use it. <laughs> really easy. Um, okay. So the other one is, is people are like, I don't, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. I can't tell you the number of times when I was first uh, getting into podcasting and I, I was doing my research about what it was that I wanted to focus on, you know, about my health and about my story. And I know that when people hear my story, they are more apt to feel like they know me. They have a better idea about how I am or how I conduct myself. And, and then they like that. They like that they can tap into who I am, but it has to be in sound bites. It's one thing if you're on stage and you're just talking, 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 it's a monologue. You don't want to do that on a podcast. On a podcast, it's sound bites. It's the um, two or three sentence long answer. You don't want to take more than, than two and a half, Five minutes is almost a monologue. It's like, you don't want to go on too long. So <clears throat> I was first listening to um, this woman who was making her rounds in the different podcasts about hypothyroidism. And every single one of her interviews was about the same. You click on it, she's introduced, they, they give the bio, like we did today, the bio with an introduction, welcome on. And she would launch right into this 10 minute long monologue about how if you don't fix your thyroid you're going to die and while it was a powerful message <laughs> i know <laughs> that's kind of crazy it was also ineffective because it didn't give us a chance to really get to know her it didn't give us a chance to understand a deeper connection with her other than what she just wanted to share and it was a little bit overwhelming and every single show i just i searched on her name on the internet and i came up with a bunch of different shows that she had been on it's all the same stuff so you can kind of, you need to mix up your message just enough just a little bit that people want to like follow you if you have that and um being a guest means that you don't let too much time pass between introduction and a hello because people are listening in the ear and it's like radio and they want they don't want dead noise so be prepared. Like when somebody says, welcome to the show, you, you don't want it. I can't tell you the number of times I've had guests on my show and there's a good two sec, two to three second pause. And I'm like, did they hear me introduce them <laughs> before they go? Oh hi, yeah. I'm so happy to be here or whatever they're going to say, or thank you Eva or something like that. You want to jump right into it and, and be present and be available for the first question because the next thing that person's going to do that host is they're going to start asking you questions. So a lot of times when you are, on a podcast, you're asked for your bio, have these things prepared, your bio, a short bio, no more than, than three sentences. If you go on too long, then, then it's, it sounds funny. It just gets weird. Um, <clears throat> your tagline, your professional photo, links to what is called your evergreen gift, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and if you have a one sheet, that's helpful because it has all of those things in it. So when Patty asked me to, you know, we were talking about doing this, this event today, I sent her my one sheet. So she had my bio, she had my picture, she had my subject matters, what I, what I talk about normally, you know, all of those things are on, on my one sheet. And when you're communicating with somebody that you want to be a guest on their show, you want to have that one sheet available to them so they know what are my topics, what can I, what can we talk about, is this a good fit for this podcast, and then you want to be able to pitch yourself. So I'm, I'm throwing a lot of ideas at you all at once, but it, it's I'm painting a picture. It's like we want to be prepared. The information you know, you know your business, you know your message, you know your bio, you know all of that stuff. Just put it in an organized matter manner on a one sheet. Um, and simply, what is a one sheet? Has anybody heard of this term before? Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, and if not, for those watching later, it's, it's a, a one sheet is exactly that. It's a, it's a simple single sheet of paper with your picture on the top. And I don't have a, for all the things, really, I'm, un, I'm unprepared. So here we are. <laughs> uh, I don't have a copy of my own. It's in the car. Uh, a copy of my own one sheet. Uh, that's how I'm prepared. When I'm out and about and I'm talking to somebody, I'm networking. I'm like, oh, let me get my one sheet. I pull it out of the back seat and they put it in their hand. Just right yeah. there. Right. But um, yeah, the one sheet has your picture on it. It has your bio on it. It has um, who, what you're all about. And then three main topics, things that you talk about and then what those mean. So that when you say, hey, I want to be on your show or are you looking for new content? And does my con, I think my con, I think your listeners would really um, enjoy getting to know and understanding this facet of my business and it could be valuable to them for this reason. So you put together your little pitch and, and then you say, here's, here's my one sheet. Mm -hmm. uh, when can I be on your show? 
Yeah. <laughs> kind of. yeah. I, I, think I like how you're talking about um, sort of the back and forth and the conversational element of a podcast, you know, so instead of having somebody that's just regurgitating information, you know, you, you have a guest or you are a guest. So this is going back and forth, which I think is far more entertaining and, um, and sticky, you know, yeah. people are going to listen to that. Well, they, they listen to that and then they love the moments when they're off guard. And, and I'll say it like this, because oftentimes when you're given a question by the host mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll answer the question and then they'll hear something in the answer that they want more details on. And after hearing the end of my tidbit, my little, you know, just a, a, a note with the two or three sentences of, of my answer, and they go back and they go, wait a minute, that sounds really interesting. Tell me more about that. And that digging in is not going, you know, it's not bypassing and going to the next question. They're present with me. And that makes it much more enjoyable. And I can't tell you, I'll go in to a podcast with a similar sound bite type of questionnaire only to be led down a road. I didn't know I was gone down, uh, but it was so much more interesting because the hosts became very interested and I allowed for it because my sound bites were small. The sound bites are small, and then she got interested or he got interested in something I said, and they took it you know, on some other tangent, and the way we went, and it was a lot of fun, and their, their listeners got to receive different information than the last podcast I was on. You know, Eva, if I could for just a second go back to when you were talking about the equipment, we had a, a question oh, good. of, is it typical to expect that the other guests also have good equipment? They have their own mic or, or something? Yeah or can you say yeah. something about that I can and so it, when you have a smaller podcast um, let me put it this way hosts will will get started with a podcast and they may have a smaller listener base maybe a thousand or um, you know ten thousand people and you say, well, that's not so small it is when you compare it to the guys who are big talking about millions of listeners all over the globe and the ones who are the hosts of the ones that, that have the millions of listeners they expect you to have at least these, at, at least something that has a microphone on it. Uh, and even, and even this little guy, they'll, some of them will tell you, they're like, all right, do you have, and they'll suggest, do you have at least this level type of technology? And, um, I would share with them. I said, I, I do have a professional mic. I don't give them the brand name. I frankly, I don't even know where the brand name is on this guy, but <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have a professional mic is all they need to know. It sounds good and it's inexpensive and it works. And so, yes, they do expect it. It's not, again, it's not a lot of money, $13 plus, you know, whatever it was for shipping. I think it might've been $3 for shipping. So um, they do expect it. Yes. Because the last thing you want is to, to not be heard. And how do you prepare your guests? What do you ask them to do? At least a minimum of, of these guys. So they, they need to have the wired mic. Um, so that way I can hear them more clearly. If they have a professional mic, then great. But when it comes to the Connected Women of Influence uh, radio shows, we don't have video, so there's no need for light. But if I did have my, when I do my own podcast, uh, my other one is called Go Please Yourself. When I have that one, I do video and I do ask that they have good lighting. So I'll say, uh, make sure you have good lighting, not just natural light, but an actual light light. And then a microphone and, um, a front facing camera. Yeah, those things are important. And and good good quality of of video is important only if it's of course video. <laughs> video taped. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any any other questions on that one? The other No, that that was yeah. it so far. I see it. Okay, yeah. good. All right. Um all right. Yeah. I think at some point I was talking about how to get on a show. So let's kind of go into that. It's like, it, there are so many, there are thousands of podcasts out there and it's good to know that not all of them are active. So some of them, um, Patty, we were talking about this before they're serial, right? So they're, they're on for a certain number of time and then they're done. So while it looks daunting initially, you want to search for podcasts that are current that are still recording that the hosts are still ongoing looking for fresh content and how do you find that a couple of ways um you can look on on search on facebook for podcasts um, the number of people who are sharing their own podcast guest 
uh, latest episode is crazy. So search for podcast. And if you want to search for one that pertains to you, for me, I, I work in holistic health. So I'll look for the correlating subject matters. Holistic health is one thing, but I prefer to look, look in, under the consciousness uh, category of podcasts and that rate that people are talking about uh, alternative medicine and they're talking about things that are outside the box that those are my people. Those are my ideal clients. Mm -hmm. So I look for podcasts that are talking to and have audiences that are equivalent to my ideal client. So once you know who your ideal client is, now you can search those podcasts and, and look for, look for a couple of things. <clears throat> look for if the host is, is still what their reach is. And you can find that on iTunes. It'll tell you what the downloads are. Um, it's usually a, a way to check st stats of a particular podcast. You can see how many people are listening. You can, if you want to go on a podcast that has a light number of audience members, but it's not a good leverage of your time, unless, you're going to do what I talk about next after this, but it's up to you. So <clears throat> you can practice <laughs> with the podcasts that have a lower audience rate. And then as your sound bites get better and better and your responses to questions get better and better, then because they do, then you can move up the scale to a higher listenership and, and really hone in your skills. So um, let's see. It's finding them. Yes, you can find them on Facebook. You can find them on LinkedIn. You can find them on iTunes. You can find them on any podcast playing uh, service. And it's, again, it's searching for the things in the category of your ideal client. And that's the best way to start. And then you can reach out to, if you're not already connected with the host, here, here's, I'll share with inside with you. So I, I went to a, a program, a, uh, a training called New Media Summit. And it's about how to be a, an ideal podcast guest and you pitch yourself. You are one of 140 people, 140, something like that, um, who all at once pitch to 40 different of the top United States podcast hosts. So they have at least a million listeners, each one of these hosts. And we had the opportunity to sit down and, and round table with many of the hosts and hear their kvitch about <laughs> people who wanted to be on their show. And so they would hear things like, hey, love your show. And the, the, the guest would write back or the host would write back and say, hey, thanks. And then the next thing you know, they were being pitched to, hey, hey I want to be on your show, as opposed to just coming forward with what they wanted in the initial, initial conversation. So it's better to come forward and ask, love your show. Listen to the last one. I think I could be a good addition because blank, blank, blank. This is your pitch. Like, what do you bring to the table for their audience members? Um, are you looking for new content? And when you ask that question, you've already given them a compliment. You let them know that you're interested in what they have to say. You might even listen to the last two of their episodes and make a mention. Hey, so-and-so said this. I, I, I agree with that or I disagree with that. And I think I could bring this, this conversation to the next level. Make yourself something that's a valuable resource for the people that are going to be listening because that's what they're looking for, for their, their newest um, you know, guest. They are, your, your, your news, what you have to say is not new to you, but it's new to them. They don't know who you are. They, they, and they're, they're going to want to hear everything. They're going to want to hear what's going on with you and how that pertains to their clientele, how their, their audience members. So um, pitch yourself, do it as a, uh, a question uh, all in once. Don't try to come at it in the back door. They hate that. And then leave a review. So here's, here's one more thing that can really kind of shoo you in is that once you listen to one of their, um, if you like their show, if you listen to the show and you listen to it and you like it, leave a review, take a screenshot of the review and include it in the connection request that you're sending to them, whether it's LinkedIn or Facebook, Messenger, however your email, whatever you're connected to and say, hey, loved your show, I just left you this review, would love to know if you're looking for more content, here is my one sheet. If you think that that's too much information on an initial conversation, it's not, they expect it. These guys, the, the, the ones that have more listenership, they don't have time mm -hmm. to sit there and chit chat with you. They just want to know, get to the chase. They just want you to, to, to know what, what, what you're all about. They want to know that you have an ability to, uh, to pitch yourself, to, to be in front of a, a group of people, that you, you have your sound bites together, that you're organized and they respect that. And they'll tell you yes or no. And I got to say 98% of the time, and I, I like to use the word 98. So 98% of the time, <laughs> They say yes. And that's how I book myself. And I was doing anywhere between one to three uh, guest spots on podcasts a week 
That's how I advertised my business last year and momentum was heightened. So now I'm ready to go through and start making more rounds again this, uh, this year. And I'll be ramping up to that many as well. I like um, how you say, are you looking for more content? Because that sounds a lot more in line with really what they're doing than when you want to be a guest on somebody's radio show or what have you, and you're trying to really showcase yourself and your business. I, I like that verbiage. That's really, that's really yeah. good. That's helpful. Yeah, that, that was the one thing that they, they stressed quite a bit. It's like they know what they're, they're here to do. They're in service to their audiences. Right. And if you're in alignment with that, then the words, you know, are you looking for new content is going to ring true to them yeah. and they're going to want you on. So We do have another question in. Um, it says, when you're a guest on a podcast, is your primary goal to build your audience for your own podcast or marketing your business or something else? That depends. So, um, at some point in the podcast, when during the interview, they're going to ask you, you know, do you have something to share? And, and you need to be able to be prepared with um, that answer before you get on the show because they want to know what is what is what are you going to offer my audience members? Mm -hmm. I offer an evergreen gift. It's a self assessment. They go onto my website. It's there on the home page, and they just you know go through the the here. Do you should you be working with me? In other words, right. and. Um, that's evergreen. It's always available. It's going to be available because these recordings are up in perpetuity forever and ever and ever and ever. <laughs> so you want to make sure that whatever you offer as a free gift is available forever and ever and ever and ever. And ever. Yeah. Um, so is your primary goal going to be something that's based on a time sensitive matter? Um, a, a new book that's coming out or a podcast that's coming out or, um, or a new launch of your new, new service of your business. Um, that's up to you to determine. It's like, do you want to do that knowing that this information is out there forever and ever and ever, or do you want to send them to a page like your home page or a guest page or something that is directly related to this podcast that has up, Dated information. So when they get there, they see, yes, here's what I have. This is what I would do as a marketing person. I would say, yes, this is, this is the gift that you came here for. And oh, mm -hmm. by the way, since you made it here, you might want to see this too. <laughs> yeah. that's, a, that's a good point. That's a really good point. Yeah. So I, I offer, I offer a free gift and, and here's the, the cool part about offering the free gift that first I was, and I talk really fast. So if you need me to slow down, just tell me. <laughs> <laughs> at, at first I was off. I was just saying, okay, my website is, and I would give it out. And then I realized I was wasting an opportunity to pitch the, the gift itself and why it was so important. So take a few seconds and you know, your 30 second pitch, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just put that in front of it. And, and the, the, the get the host will ask you, do you have anything that you'd like to share with our audience members before we continue? Uh, yes, I, I absolutely would. And so you, you kind of share that that pitch, you know, what is it you're looking to share? And then you share the link or if you want to share an email, whatever that is, um, that information, it should be that evergreen thing. But take a few seconds. Don't just say, oh, my, here's my email. Here's my website. Here's my phone number. Uh, give them one thing to go to because if you do more than that, it's confusing to the listener. They're at, remember, right. they're in the car. They're at the gym. They're listening. They're like, oh, my God, I'm not going to remember all of that. Mm -hmm. um, just give them one thing, give them one thing they can remember and, and don't make it this long, lengthy dash marked dot, you know, dot com dot blah, 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 blah. It's, it's gotta be simple. Um, so keep it simple, something they can remember and something they can go to right when they're done. And that way <clears throat> it's easy. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Good. good. And go so another question um, is, is there content that is not appropriate? for a podcast or, or maybe it's not so much the content or it's the type of work or, uh, you know, there are, there are podcasts for every subject matter out there. <laughs> I can tell you <laughs> there are some that are for mature audiences only and it's no hold barge. And you have that conversation with your podcast host before you get started. Um, you ask them and say, Hey, is this a, uh, a, a no swear zone or are you okay if mm -hmm. I get, get a little bit crazy? And they'll tell you, they're like, Nope, we have a, a Christian base and we're more conservative and we don't want to hear a foul language or yeah, no problem. And, and they'll answer with an explicative themselves uh, <laughs> and be like, yeah, that's all good. So it just depends on, on the preference of the host. And of course, where you want to, where you want to match it. 
Um, but yeah, there's no subject matter that's off limits. It's just a matter of you need to let, or the host should then let the audience members know what they're listening to. And I'll, I'll give you an example of that. Um, I started recording and working with a host. I'm no longer working with that host for this reason. This, this all transpired. So for go please myself, go please yourself rather. Go please yourself <laughs> podcast. <laughs> so I'm the health coach coming from the health perspective. And then I had a mindset coach coming from the emotional intelligence side. And we were both talking about how health and mindset affect love and our love relationships and then vice versa how love affects both of those in return and we had this beautiful guest on the show who is the founder of entice me well that if you know anything about entice me it's a multi-level marketing company that sells adult toys and we got into the conversation about how adult toys have toxic chemicals in them that our children's toys are not allowed to have they're banned those 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 things same toxic chemicals are banned from children's toys but because it was such a touchy subject for capitol hill they were not willing to have the conversation about adult sex toys and the contents of the ingredient list that were toxic to the body and i found that very interesting so we recorded this conversation and it was adult content meant for adults and his family listened in, my co-host's family listened in to this podcast after the fact, after we recorded it and we were putting out all this, this con great content and lining up more people to, to interview. And he came back and he goes, Eva, we have a problem. And I'm thinking he's kidding. I'm like, it was a great show. What are you talking about? And he says, my family was listening to it and they thought it was pornography. I know, me too. My eyebrows wow. raised. Yeah. Okay. So you, you don't know. I know. <laughs> We're also from Southern California. We're different than Boston. So the, their, their values and what they defined as pornography were different than mine and a lot of people's. And so there's very conservative. They're the reason why we still have the same problems of those toxic chemicals in adult toys. <laughs> same kind of people that won't get them anyways so that kind of, of subject matter for me that was okay and I told him I said look I'm not going to be censored his family wanted me to, to leave out you know the pornographic content and I'm like we weren't reading an adult story we were talking about things in a matter of fact way and how these toxins affect the body and the endocrine system and it was causing issues with fertility that to them was too uncomfortable so even though we labeled it as um, mature content and we addressed it that way and it was all professionally done the listeners you know they they had their own issue but this this is was it was it wrong content no mm -hmm. not for me not as the host not as somebody who was saying this is what i wanted it to be about because these are the these are the topics that are important sure. to me they need to be discussed so there as long as it's okay with the host in this case i had to excuse my co-host and find somebody new <laughs> <laughs> I says, I will not be censored on my own show, Joe. You're going to have to to make a decision here. Yeah. And so we made a decision to part ways, but we stay in touch. So yeah, for, for him, that was too much. For, for me, it wasn't. And it's up to the host and then the guest to meet that those expectations. So otherwise, there is no, I mean, if I wanted to have a pornographic show, I totally could. I yeah. could sit down and read a bunch of Harlequin, mod, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wouldn't be listening to that one. <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't be doing it. But I mean, if we wanted to, you could. And that's what I'm saying. There's no limit. You just have to make sure that you put the, um, the rating. So when, yes. you're, when, you're, when you're doing a podcast, if you're the host, then you have the opportunity to add a rating to your show. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. And the ones I listen to, they always start at the beginning, you know, with, with this has adult content or, or it may be that just the subject matter is something that is sensitive. Some people are sensitive to, they're triggered by it, you know, or, or something. So. Yeah. Yeah. Especially yeah. if there's violence or some sort of trauma that you're talking about. Sure. And yeah. <clears throat> so always warn your host too, if you have something traumatic you want to talk about. Yeah. How long have you been doing this? You might've said this at the beginning and I missed it, but. No, I don't think I did. So, I mean, as, as soon as it started, I think, podcasting became a real big thing for marketing maybe three years ago. And so I started podcasting as a guest two years ago. And then I started being a host of one about a year ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So three Great. Years. 
Well, this is amazing, Eva. I'm, I'm learning so much. I'm, okay. I told you I love doing these because I get to learn, you know, and, and I get to find the guests and bring them over, you know, so it's, it's always exciting for me. But I wanted to open it up and see if some folks have some questions. And Deborah, I see you've got your hand up. So yes. yeah, go, go for it, dear. Okay, so Eva, I've got a question. When you're using your big red mic, how are you hearing the other speakers? Okay, excellent question. And that's one, see, I, that's something I, I just bulldoze right over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my mic, and I can't, I can only show you so much because it's plugged into the computer. Right. It has this little um, audio connection here. So this is the mic and it, I, you probably can't hear me now. And it goes, <laughs> it, goes yeah, we can hear you. Okay. it goes into this and then it has this separate cable. It's a Y cord that goes into my auxiliary of my computer. And this cable here is the bypass because there's no headphones on this guy, right? right. And I don't want to use the, the speakers of the computer because the speakers of the computer will play out loud and cause an echo That's to be right. heard through this, right. Right. the microphone. Mm -hmm. So the bypass goes into my second set of earbuds, which are tucked behind my ears. Okay. Okay. Nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I don't like the headset that some people wear. That you know, yeah. I'm messes with the for, hair. I'm girl. too cute for that. Okay, <laughs> and you know that messes with what I'm doing. So that was my big question. Okay, gotcha. gotcha. I was, I was, that was a great question, Deborah, because I, I was actually on the phone with somebody yesterday. We were practicing for an upcoming webinar, and she plugged in her microphone, and then she couldn't hear me talking. You know, yeah. Right. So yep. That's, yep. that's good technical info. Same yeah. thing happens with the lavalier. So the lavalier, you plug into the auxiliary cable. Now you lose your speakers. Yes. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. So that's great if you want to do your own little podcast and you want to do like a soapbox. I can't believe moment and Facebook Live it. Yeah. Lavalier. Right. Yeah. 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 Great. And then Lauren has a question. Um, how much prep do you do with the host prior to the show or with your guests when you're the host? So there's things that I do regularly and then each host does their own thing. For me, I will invite my guests onto a, a call that might be as long as the podcast itself to explore topics and really dig deep into who they are, what they're all about. And then of course, go over the technical aspects of what to expect while they're on the call. Mm -hmm. So I do that the day before our actual, you know, interview, whatever that is. And with hosts, I found this correlation the more listeners they have, the less likely they are to prepare with you ahead of time. So I've had, I've had a listenership that was lower and they wanted to prep more. And they'll, they'll ask me for a call and they'll say, let's make sure that you're the right fit. And then the ones that have the more uh, listenership, they're, they're going live and shooting from the hip, man. They're just, <laughs> they're ready to dig in with you and yeah. whatever shows up, shows up. Um, and I don't know if that's just, they got tired of spending the extra time doing the prep, but um, it leaves for a very nice fluid and um, a conversation that's very candid. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's always nice. So it just depends. It depends. All of them depend. Okay. Great. And then um, Donna is asking what equipment is needed when there are three people involved in a podcast. Okay. So <clears throat> I used special software <laughs> and I will share. So <clears throat> the one that I like to use, let's see, it's called StreamYard. And mm -hmm. you can use Zoom if you want to, but Zoom has a limitation. So no more than 40 minutes with more than two people. So if you have three people on a podcast and you want to record it ahead of time, Mm -hmm. Send the link to everybody. You all get on there and you hit the record, just like we're doing right here. Mm -hmm. If you have the free account, I should say. Free account, yeah. assume you have a limitation to the 40 minutes. Right. Which is great if you're only doing a 15 minute or a half hour show. Mm -hmm. Fine. But if you want to do something where you want to immediately stream it live and you don't want to deal with the editing and the post this and the post that, I use StreamYard and I, I uh, create a connection. StreamYard.com. It's a free resource. It's a web-based program that allows you to connect to either a Facebook page, a Facebook group. Um... <laughs> that was loud. <laughs> Somebody was driving. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, I thought it was an airplane at first, but I think it was a motorcycle. So <laughs> um, it allows you to connect to one of your streaming medias, whether that's Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, wherever you want to, to post it, you can. And um, you can record you 
your co-host, and then you, you multiple, up to six people total can be on a StreamYard call at one time where you're collecting, that's way too many people, by the way, but, but three people you know, can be on a call like that where you have your co-host and then your guest calling in and you can record it right then. You can record just the audio. You can record just the re audio with the video. You can record it separate from having to stream it or you can stream it live to one of your, so you have a lot, a lot of choices to play with. And I like that one the best. It's the most closely related to doing a Facebook Live and sharing that Facebook Live with another, a friend on Facebook on your homepage, on your, your personal profile, which is the only place that you can do a Facebook Live with multiple people, by the way. <laughs> so I, I have a real basic question. Yeah. Um, so you've decided you want to have a podcast. Mm -hmm. And, and the ones I listen to, you know, they're all produced by some company, you know, so there's Wondery and there's, you know, um, I don't know, different ones that I listen to and so forth, but just, you know, plain old so-and-so wants to do a podcast. Mm -hmm. So where, what is the platform, I guess, or is it just, you do something like on zoom and you record it and then you just put it out there and people begin following you like on Facebook or well they can um i'm looking for i wrote it i wrote it down because i oh here it is anchor so mm -hmm. the one that i use yeah is it's called anchor a n c h o r dot f m if you go to anchor.com it's something else i don't know what it is but anchor dot f m okay. is the is the link and you go to there and you can take your zoom uh, recording or your skype recording and upload it to your own channel. So you log in, it's free. Log yeah, into your free account, you create it, um, you name it, um, you upload the content, whether it's just audio or video with audio, you give this, the session a description, it walks you through the process and it says, do you wanna publish it? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. And next morning you get all these things that says, hey, you're now on iTunes. Hey, you're now on iPlay. Hey, you're now on Stitcher. Hey, you're now, and it tells you. So now you've got the link to your own podcast where it is sitting on anchor right and then you can take it and share it on facebook on linkedin on youtube wherever or in an email you can embed it onto your website all of these different ways you can take it now um the best way that i've been able to take media because quite frankly on facebook youtube linkedin nobody watches the whole thing um <clears throat> i find that little snippets are useful and so I'll take my content and this is this is more of an answer but this is what I do with my podcast as I do them so I'll take the podcast and I'll transcribe it and that gives me a blog on my website and it gives me some content and like Eva why would you transcribe it that's a lot of work not if you use otter <laughs> Felicia knows <laughs> um, so otter takes your your your, trans, your whole conversation and transcribes it into a document that you can just copy and paste. O-T-T-E-R, just like the little, you know, animal, otter.com. And you upload the audio <clears throat> and it just transcribes the whole thing for you. Now you've got content to cut and paste. You can make your own little um, Instagram quotes with it, right? Now you've got, and by the way, where you find your best quotes, somewhere between 15 and 20 minutes in on the interview. Yeah. It's, it's rarely the first thing you say ever, 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 <laughs> but you'll find a gem and you're like, Oh, I can quote myself. And it's yeah. awesome. <laughs> oh, we're, we're getting all kinds of really cool ideas here. And, and Eva, I think yeah. you shared, um, I, I like a year ago on one of our radio show calls, um, about, uh, something that pulled, uh, pulled out of the transcript and made an audio clip. Yeah. You know, what was that? So there is another one called make.headliner.app. And there was, there's a question about, can you edit the StreamYard video? You can download wherever you send it to. Yes, you can download that video from StreamYard and edit it in an editor. And I used, again, free. I'm the queen of free. <laughs> uh, make.headliner.app, A-P-P. And, oh, my God, you're going to fall in love with the resources. It gives you all these different ways to take that video or just the audio, you can make the audio with a single picture or with an, they'll give you pictures with the video, they'll make a video for you, they'll take, they'll transcribe it, they'll even put, uh, what's that called, closed captions for you. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's crazy the amount of resources that this headliner.app has for you and, and it's all 
free. Wow. And yes, you can edit the video there. Yeah. Or you can edit it in YouTube. I mean, shoot, there's, there's another way to do it there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, okay, so all of the resources that you've told us about so far, there's there's Otter, mm -hmm. there's um, StreamYard, there's the headline one, there's, there was one more. That Anchor. Was, Anchor, yeah, yep. anchor.fm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is, you guys, this is just all free and there's no charge for this, but I'm thinking of starting to charge for this. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, this has just been awesome. What other questions do you all have for, for Eva? Or Eva, what have you got in addition to share with us today? I have one. Yes. <laughs> you want to get your thoughts. Yeah. So I assume the answer is yes, because you're still doing the podcast. M what I'm thinking about is the the return on investment to your business though. Mm -hmm. you know, there, there's a lot of podcasts out there. There's mm -hmm. a lot of space to, to when you're in and in, but, but did you see a material impact to your business revenue? Absolutely. It went from, you know, I was just networking locally, um, which was, it was, was impactful to some degree. And, but as soon as I started doing podcasting, this is when I went from being a local community based business to being a worldwide business and mm -hmm. being able to connect with people. Now I have clients in, in England. I have clients in Dubai and Abu Dhabi and in North Africa area and like all over Canada and, and Costa Rica, all over the place, because no matter where you are, you can listen in. And as long as they speak English, I can do business with them. So yes. And I love it knowing that when I go live with um, somebody has released one of the recordings, I'll wake up with a few emails. Hey, where do I send my hair? <laughs> because I, I do hair analysis. So they hear the story and how it's happened and what, what it did for me. And they're like, ah, that resonates. It makes sense to me. I want to do this. They'll go to the website and they'll, and, and oftentimes I'll see that they've gone through and, and performed the self-assessment. And they've set up a little um, a 20 minute discovery call with me. So yes, absolutely. It, it, trans, it translates all the time. And the ones I always ask, I says, where do you hear me? Where did you hear about me? And um, they'll tell me, oh, such and such podcast. And so I'll be able to, to track back and I'll take that podcast and I make sure to amplify that podcast message. I'll duplicate it. I'll take that same podcast and upload it to my YouTube channel and I'll take that and I'll, I'll send links to my website and then make a, um, I was talking about that earlier, the transcribed blog, a YouTube video that gets posted into that blog, um, a Facebook post that's just a portion of that blog with a link to my website. So you can, it's all these link backs. It's all, all taking all of this information and then just making sure that you maximize the exposure on the ones where the message is heard most clearly. So yes, <laughs> it has. Yeah. And that, that's been the most fun is um, kind of looking back. I've, I've got one that I love the most and I still get new clients from every once in a while, even though it's been over a year, it's been almost two years since the interview. And it was the sustainable, not mines, uh, Marjorie Alexander, I believe is her last name. And she interviewed me on sustainability. It's like, how does that relate to what I do in business? And I honestly, right now in this moment, I forget how I did it. But if you've become a master <laughs> at taking what you do <laughs> and bridging the gap and making sense of it with their con, like what it is that their subject matter is all about, you can get virtually on any podcast. And that's what I did in this state. And I got to tell you, it was a surprise to see the number of people who reached out afterwards and continue to reach out and say, I really loved what you had to say about blank, 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 blank. It made sense to me. I want to start with you. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Well, what, what else can you tell us about your business and how people can reach you and uh, maybe an evergreen offer? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny that you should ask, Patty. <laughs> <laughs> so when I'm, yeah, when I'm on, when I'm on a podcast and someone asks me, what would you like to share? I'll start with something like this. It's like, well, if you've heard something today that's made you feel like you know what, I'm not so sure that I have something wrong with me. And so what I do is I help people stop telling those little stories that they tell themselves and believe mm -hmm. about why they should be okay with how they feel in their body right now. It's like there's too many of us who are like, 
Oh, it's normal at this age to lose my eyesight. Oh, it's normal at this age for me to go gray. Oh, it's normal at this age for, you know, I, I should, I get my nails done or whatever it is. I got a bad back. It's like, that's normal. Right. Mm -hmm. And I say, no, uh -uh, no, it's not normal because I experienced all of that and more problems with my health galore by the time I was 20. Wow. And everybody kept saying to me, Eva, you're way too young to feel that way. And I, I says, yeah, I know, but that's not helpful. And so that started me on my journey. And I really had to find out what's the correlation between how I feel and what's going on inside my body. And so I have evergreen on my website. It's the elevate institute.com, the elevate institute.com. Don't forget the, the, so T H E elevate institute.com on the home page. It says, um, self-assessment. And so you can go through this 20 question, 20 question questionnaire of uh, whether or not you have imbalances that are yet to be revealed and they're covered up in simple things that we don't know to look for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the question is not, doesn't require blood and it's not more information. It's just, Hey, you've got the information. What do I do with it? And it lets you know if this is something you need to do. So if you go to that, fill out the questionnaire, you'll get an answer right back. that says, you know what, it might be a good idea for you to work with me or, Hey, you're perfect. You're good to go. Mm -hmm. Wow. Great. That's excellent. Well, anyone have any additional questions for Eva? This has been really, really, really good. I'm so glad it's recorded. I'm so glad it's going to be available afterwards so we can all go back to it again. But any additional questions for our, our fabulous guest? All right. Well, then I am going to uh, bid farewell to all of you lovely ladies. I'm so grateful that you joined us today. And Eva, so grateful that you um, took time out of your day to spend with us. And for those of you who are not members of Connected Women of Influence, please check out our Facebook page or check us out at connectedwomenofinfluence.com and uh, look for an upcoming meeting and so forth. And also look for promotions of these upcoming online forums. They're designed for you so that you can participate wherever you are uh, or you can listen to them later and just full of information, full of fun things to talk about. So thank you again, Eva and everyone else. See you next time and, uh, and have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye everybody. Bye.